pain. We fall apart over painkiller. Get shocked by the pain station. And some people are painfully excited about future tactics. Hold on to your underwear, ladies. It's game time. Warning! May cause seizures! It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb! Kind of like Pokemon. <laughs> Welcome to X-Play. On today's show, we have a shooter where you literally go to hell. Fun place. A real-time strategy game filled with a delightful amount of spurting blood. And a tactical RPG unlike any you've seen before. Plus, because Legions of Screaming Children demanded it, Pokemon Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Adam and I play a game on the Pain Station, the only console that can burn you and give you a communicable disease. It's like an Xbox crossed with an angry dominatrix. Mm -hmm. But we start things off with a first-person shooter that will give the Serious Sam fans something to cheer about. Now, for those of you who don't know, Serious Sam was a cult hit released in 2001 on the PC. Now, people loved it because it was one of the first, per you know, first-person shooters besides Doom pit you against swarming stampedes of monsters. You had to frantically mow them down as your heart rate went higher than a trust fund hippie at a fish concert. Okay, now a new first person shooter called Painkiller is out, and it may be what the Serious Sam fans have been waiting for. Here's our blood-soaked review of Painkiller for the PC. Come to Papa. Okay, pay attention. This is the part of the review where we're gonna make fun of the game. Actually, a problem is with the story. Painkiller is a first-person shooter with a storyline that's about as engaging as most other first-person shooters. In other words, it sucks. You play a guy who's too preoccupied with trying to get a little nookie to bother keeping his eyes on the road. And before you can say, hey, watch out for that truck, wham! The poor guy winds up in purgatory talking to Mr. Creepy Voice. So apparently demons from hell are invading purgatory and the man upstairs can't be bothered to lift a finger. So they want to send you out to do his dirty work. I know where to get weapons. Along the way, you meet up with Eve. Put that weapon down. Yep, it's the original hot chick. Wish she'd get a haircut. Yeah, so I know what you're thinking. This is all really dumb. Fortunately, there's some gameplay as well. And trust me, if you like action, this is a game you don't want to miss. At first glance, Painkiller is an ultra-generic shooter. It trapes about in spooky locations, dispatching wave after wave of monsters that will look right at home on a heavy metal album cover. So, after the first level, we were just about ready to send this baby to the bargain bin. But then we started to notice something special about Painkiller. It freaking rocks. The violence here is so over the top, it turns every single kill into a thing of, well, beauty. When it comes to dealing out the damage, you've got five different weapons, each with a unique secondary firing mode. For example, your shotgun is nice, but it can shoot out liquid nitrogen to freeze your enemy solid. Chill! And the steak gun looks sucky at first, but after you pin a few guys against the wall, you'll come back to this weapon time and time again. Let's make sure he's dead. yippee ki Even the game's namesake weapon, the painkiller, proves handy, either up close as a mobile Cuisinart, or from the distance as a holy ray of death. Now, besides the killing, you also have to collect souls. Should you snag 66 of them, you'll turn into an invulnerable killing machine. And who wouldn't want to be one of those? Tarot cards can grant you special abilities, like endurance, which is welcome because some parts of the game are T-O-U-G-H, tough. But the game never feels impossible. You're definitely the baddest badass in the afterlife. So, Painkiller is tough to categorize. Let's just say it's a mindless shooter that we give a four out of five. This game was awesomely violent. I enjoyed it immensely. And if you don't own a PC, don't worry. Painkiller will also be out on the Xbox later this year. 
Now, Painkiller brings up an interesting point. Sure, firing a steak gun is moving and beautiful, but is it art? Now, if a film can be an acknowledged art form, why not game? Well, guess what? what? Now they are. We went down to the Yerba Buena Center in San Francisco to see one of the first exhibits dedicated to the art of video games. And that's where we found the Pain Station. We're here at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts to check out Bang the Machine, computer gaming art and artifacts. Finally, someone figured out that gaming is an art form. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Now this angular fellow right here is John Carmack. He's the head of id Studios that makes Doom and Quake. This is in honor of the fact that he really created 3D images in games. That's why they made a polygonal model off of him. Behind me are some portraits of gaming luminaries. On the top we have Will Wright, creator of The Sims, and he's holding one of his cute little Sims in his hands. Deg Deg. Now below him is Lord British. He's the creator of Ultima Online. What's up with the plastic cup, though? Maybe he's a big party animal. Okay, now here are two people that you should always have a portrait of in your home. That's Shigeru Miyamoto. He made Mario and Zelda. He's smiling because he made really good games. Now up here is Shinji Mikami. He created Resident Evil. Now notice he's not always in the frame. Maybe it's a bad camera angle. This is so cool. I want this in my house. Is it a carpet or is it Space Invaders? It's both. So we're here with Rene de Guzman, who put together this show. And yeah. I just kind of ask you, you don't usually expect to see games inside of a museum. So yeah. what brought this about? The video games have evolved to the point where they are interesting to look at beyond um, the sort of package games that you get out of companies. Artists can then use it as sort of a language to create works of art. This looks like almost like Age of Empires or Diablo uh -huh, or something, where right. you look closely at the photos, at the pictures. Right. They're something quite different. Yeah, I think what, what, what this artist is trying to point out is how uh, increasingly our experience of the world is mediated through media. All yeah. I know is that if, if, if we get to live our lives more virtually, I want more hair. <laughs> So this is in questionable taste. This is Waco Resurrection. You play as David Koresh and you're protecting your compound. There are some voice activated elements and the weird part is that the microphone is in the giant Koresh head. Let's play. Hey there, Morgan. We've heard a lot about this. This is the pain station. It was made by Germans. Mm -hmm. You basically play Pong against your opponent, and if you let the ball pass the paddle and get shot. All right, the way that you start the game is you put your hand down here by depressing these two buttons. That completes the electrical circuit, and that lets the game know that you're ready to play and get hurt. Oh! Uh. So, not content with one type of pain, the pain station offers up three. You can get whipped with this little doodad right here. Oh! Uh. Now, these nodules here give an electric shock. Oh! Uh. And out of here, there's hot burning heat. Oh, oh boy. It sounds like fun, right? You up for a game? We know how this is going to turn out. Oh, oh boy. Uh oh, that really hurt. Something bad's going to happen. <laughs> Today we learned that video games can be art, and that art can be painful and embarrassing. Can I take this off now? No. Okay, the pain station seriously hurts. I got whipped and shocked. Now for me, the pain, borderline torture, tension, and degradation, that was just another day here at X-Play. Uh, you can see our full interview with Rene de Guzman at our website. TechTV.com slash xplay. He has a lot of interesting things to say about art and video games. Or you can just download outtakes and Morgan and me getting whipped and burned. Somehow I think the more critical fans will like that more. Mm -hmm. Coming up, future tactics. I killed a boogie woogly. Boogly woogly? Is that even a word? I've done a lot. But I just did something I never thought I could do. I took my first flying lesson for $49. It was fun and it was easy thanks to a great flight instructor. All it took was $49 and the free certificate from Be A Pilot. 
Try flying for just $49 with your certificate from Be a Pilot. Call 888 Be a Pilot or log on to BeAPilot.com. Surprise yourself, expand your world, and discover flying. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You know you're wrong, right? Yeah. Hearts or puppies? Hearts and puppies. She replied to my email yet? Oh. How about now? Oh. How about these? How about these? Ballet? Works every time. That was good, right? Ballet? Life's better with the butterfly. Come see all the ways you can get more done at msn.com. Welcome to the meeting. It's nothing like a meeting. No travel, no downtime. Just pure collaboration. Microsoft Office Live Meeting. A new service that lets you collaborate with groups small to large. Hold impromptu discussions to high-profile presentations. All with just a phone, PC, and an internet connection. So no matter where you are, it's as if you're all at the same table. I play games and watch a fantastic show at the same time. Signed, All Thumbs and Thackeray. Mm, well, Thumbbell, we've made it so easy, even Adam can do it. Play Tech TV's Hyperactive. It's the game you play online while you're watching X Play. Answer trivia questions, chat, win cool prizes, and more. To play, log on to techtv.com slash hyperactive during X Play Monday through Friday nights at 11 Eastern, 10 Central. Watch and win. Play Tech TV's Hyperactive only on Tech TV. I'm running out of colorful adjectives here as Adam Zetzler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have a tactical role-playing game for you. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, right, a giant grid. Well, don't worry. For a strategy game, Future Tactics feels a lot more like an RPG than a tactical title. Here's our view of Future Tactics. You're right. The world was certainly a better place without it. People lived in cities once, drove cars, Made love, had kids, put down roots, not like now. Welcome to the sexually repressed future. Strange creatures have disrupted order on Earth, and it's your job to fix it. Uh-huh, like you haven't heard that before. But this is different. Look at me. Whee! This is Future Tactics, a turn-based tactical RPG that looks and feels like a platformer. So here's the deal. Forget the number-crunching, grid-like battlefields of other tactics games. You're free to run your character up, down, and all around the Valley of the Green Dots. Each mission has a condition objective, like blowing this catapult to smithereens. But doing that is not easy. You also have to attack and defend against the hordes of aliens that try and get in your way. Plus, the targeting system can be a little frustrating. Mmm, I just want to... Damn, sometimes it's hard to keep steady. Usually, you get to toggle between a few characters, with each of them getting one shot. Then the enemies get their turn. Here's where hide-and-go-seek comes into play. So, find shelter behind rocks or inside newly blasted craters. I killed a boogly woogly. But don't stay there too long. I'll get it. And if an enemy finds you, you can be sure the little bastard is going to call out to his other comrades. Get over here, quickly! Here's another thing. The natural environments like rocks will become a hazard when destroyed. And watch this. So get creative and use them to your advantage. Here's something helpful. Enemies likely to attack will have your character's face in its thought bubble. Along the way, you get power-ups and other upgrades that will help you. And did I mention that there's a story with some emotional impact? Stop interrupting! What do you want? My feet hurt. Yeah, want to know what I think of it? <laughs> 
Seriously, skip it and get to the action. While the story and fake British accents dull the gameplay... Hold on to your underwear, ladies. The guy with the ten-ton gun is in town. Whatever, just don't get in my way. The dynamic and destructible battlefields and hands-on approach to strategy still make Future Tactics an interesting and original game. X-Play gives Future Tactics a 3 out of 5. Future Tactics is a nice departure from what we've come to expect from tactical RPGs. Though the Harry Potter clone with the glasses and the boogly woogly talk is annoying. As annoying as me? No, no, he's much more annoying than you. You're quite lovable. Okay, what if I said boogly woogly? A little less lovable. What if I said dick dick? Up next, optimism abounds in procedure. Is it my curse to bring sorrow and death to all who are dear to me? Enemy Unleashed, tonight at 1 a.m. 12 Central, only on Tech TV. Gateway would like to reintroduce you to the home computer. It's our 310T desktop, and right now you can take one home for just $499.99. It's packed with the Intel Pentium 4 processor, so it's got plenty of power for the whole family. Along with a big screen for kids' games and tons of storage for mom and dad's photos, all at a great price. In fact, BestStuff.com said our 310 series offers plenty of bang for the buck. So call Gateway today and get all you need for less than 500 bucks. We see Marco, jazz master, rock star, classical virtuoso. We see his potential. We are inspired to create software that helps him reach it. Susan, I'm Frank's friend Steve. Of course you are. <laughs> nice to meet you. Come on in. Dinner's almost ready. Oh, uh, I thought we were going out. I made reservations. Oh, no, no, no. I made lasagna. Oh, don't worry. I used soy cheese because I know that you're lactose intolerant. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Try this on. Wow, you made this for me? Yeah, I learned how to knit online. It's, it's really no big deal. And these. And this. Okay, let's go meet my parents. Special treatment. Bad idea for blind dates, good idea for online trading. Ameritrade Apex is our premier active trading program. Get special benefits like the latest trading tools, access to exclusive webcasts, and discounts on research products. I see. Sign up now and get $100 if you qualify for Apex, plus 25 commission-free internet equity trades. Go to Ameritrade.com slash Apex today slash or call 888-591-8723. Hello to my little friends. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have a real-time strategy game for you. Sure, it's full of resource gathering and stronghold building, but it's also full of spurting blood and the screams of the dying. Yes, here's our preview of the seizure. <sighs> the world of Besieger for the PC. Will you join us in our battle? <laughs> yeah, we know it doesn't quite sound like a real word, but our good friend Webster is never wrong. A Besieger is one who does the besieging. Enemy! Enemy! And that's a pretty apt description of the gameplay. Besiege, to surround a city or stronghold with armed forces in order to bring about its surrender or capture. Two, to crowd around somebody in an oppressive way. Check and check. Besieger is an RTS that takes a decidedly unpopular gameplay strategy and makes it the main focus of the game. Drawing the army closer to the city. It encourages you to build lots of defenses and hole up in your impenetrable fortress of solitude. If you did this in any other RTS, you'd be labeled a wuss. Do you need me? But in Besieger, it's a very smart move. The rich 3D graphics are easily on par with other games, and there's pretty much no limit to how far you can see. All the pretty little trees, rocks, and people running around are fodder for the carnage that awaits. I just love the sounds of happy birds as I slaughter ogres and wolves. Luckily, this game takes place before the SPCA in animal cruelty laws. For an RTS, this game is pretty bloody. It's like every hit you land severs a major artery. That's nice. We like that. 
Oh no, everyone is dead. Now what do we do? Mm, let's go look for more things to destroy and kill. As I mentioned earlier, the main emphasis of this game is on building up your defenses while tearing down your opponents. To achieve either, you'll need to partake in the holy trinity of RTS games, gathering your resources, building your base, and raising your army. Are you angry with me? Is it my curse to bring sorrow and death to all who are dear to me? <laughs> there are no big surprises here, but we have to admit, it's fun going around in big groups, cutting down trees, slaughtering the wildlife, and plundering and pillaging everything else in sight. Oh, what a nice looking town. Let's go burn it to the ground. Expect the Seeger to land on store shelves later this spring. You are the last hope for your tribe. And you can expect our full review of the Seeger when it comes out later this year. And stick around because coming up we have Pokemon! Yes! Pokemon! The game that romanticizes making small cuddly animals fight to the death. It's for kids. Yay! Coming up! Because millions of eight-year-olds demanded it! Pokemon Coliseum! This bolt is four and a half inches long, made from hardened alloy steel. Six of them connect the cargo box of the Ford F-150 to its frame. Why do we do this when others don't? Because we're building the strongest pickup. You can be sure of that. We are. Only one truck earned the right to be the next Ford F-150. Hurry into Circuit City today and save on your new DirecTV system. Right now, get a free three-room DirecTV system installed. When you activate any Total Choice programming package, after mail-in rebate, you save $150. And you'll get this free golf package with any multi-room DirecTV system after mail-in offer, worth $200. That's a total value of $350, only at Circuit City. I moved to Earthlink because my wireless connection goes where I do. We moved because I can be online and she won't miss a call. It's for me. I moved because I can have high speed at home and still get email wherever I go. I moved to Earthlink because they help keep online intruders out. I moved to Earthlink because their customer service gets it right the first time. Different people, different passions, different reasons for moving to Earthlink. From an array of access options to an assortment of protection tools. What will your reasons be? Call 1-800-827-0142 and get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. I'm with Earthlink because they've revolved around me for 10 years. Celebrate 10 years of Earthlink making the internet better. Performance, control, protection. Choose the internet that's right for you. Call, go online, or visit these retailers and get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. Move to Earthlink. It revolves around you. Welcome to Unscrewed. I'm Laura Swisher. I'm your TV pal, Martin Starch. All right, tonight's show is so full of Vin, it'll pop you in the nose if you look at it crosswise. Take a walk on the wild side of technology. Unscrewed, weeknights at 11.30, 10.30 Central, only on Tech TV. Seriously, people, you really should know them by now. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I'm Adam. It's yes, me. Adam, welcome back to X-Play. Oh, come on. Oh. The name brings joy to little children and sheer unbridled panic to adults everywhere. As one anonymous parent recently stated, I'd rather have unanesthetized prostate surgery than sit through another Pokemon movie. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry. This game isn't based on a Pokemon movie. Mm -hmm. No, it's the first real Pokemon game for the GameCube, Pokemon Coliseum. And unable to roll over in its grave, the majestic Roman structure that lends Pokemon Coliseum its title will be quietly crumbling throughout this review. Goodbye, history. Hello, review of Pokemon Coliseum.
The course of human history is strewn with the scars of conflict. And we would never have come so far if we hadn't been at each other's throats. But in a world where plump, innocent beasties fight in an endless proxy war has so much ever rested on the shoulders of one young boy and his balls. Poke balls, you pervert. Pokemon Coliseum is more what the fans want. More Pokemon, more battles, and more battles. It's like cockfighting without prison time. As your abilities grow, you can catch more powerful Pokemon. So how do I know so much about Pokemon? Well, when it's time to throw down, no one gets it done like the Sessler. However, there are times when Pokemon aren't the weapon of choice, as my recent encounter with some gaming heavies illustrates. Sessler, we want those cheat codes. Yeah, well you may want the cheat codes, but I'm not gonna give them to you because I have Pokemon! not my best work. Social skills in the Pokemon world aren't very sophisticated. Case in point, they have battles instead of greetings. If you meet an enemy, you battle. And if you meet a friend, you battle. I think all these people went to the prom alone. The tone of the game is a touch edgier than earlier titles. See, you were part of a criminal gang of Pokemon poachers, but you betrayed your buddies and stole a special gadget that lets you capture dark Pokemon. These dark Pokemon have a special hyper mode, which makes their attacks more damaging, but they're so disobedient, they might attack your other Pokemon or even you. You can purify these Maladrots by using turns in battle to heal them. Tactically, this is a compromise. Healing means they can level up and learn new moves, but leaves you at a disadvantage during the fight. The strength of the franchise is also its weakness. Pokemon Coliseum plays at the shallow end of the strategy pool, and most of the gameplay is spent navigating lists and menus. Pokemon fans will dig it, but then I don't really need to tell you that. Other gamers will get a good chance to try out the trademark rock, paper, scissors gameplay to see if it makes them swoon with the light. X-Play gives Pokemon Coliseum a three out of five. Now, how many times can you be burned, pummeled, and shocked in one show? Well, it depends on if we give the interns baseball bats. Mm, it's a good, not a bad idea. Let's go to your mail. Okay. Today's email is from Dwayne. He writes, where can I post disembodied voice intros? Excellent question, Dwayne. And we have an excellent answer for you. Now, some of you know, some of the intros our disembodied voice reads are written by fans. You know, the ones we're talking about. Please welcome two people we like to write cruel intros about. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Nice. And now they're such uplifting fair. That was very good, by the way. It was? Yeah, it was. Thanks. Yes, all you have to do is log on to the Discuss X-Play Topics area of the X-Play message board to post your disembodied voice intros. If we choose yours, we'll add it to the Intro Hall of Fame. We have a Hall of Fame? Yes, we do. Really? For the intros. It's but called we the don't intro have one for us. Mm. All right, if that's not <laughs> enough interactivity for you, whoa, though, that's a lot. Every night, you can play X-Play's hyperactive game. <laughs> that's hyperactive. You are hyperactive. You can play along as you watch the show at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, it is a nighttime show you play along with, and there's like a leaderboard, and you can yeah. see if you're winning. And if you're winning, you can tell the other people, you suck, I'm winning. Exactly. Which I don't do much due to my lack of success. And, and then you can get prizes and stuff like that. It's basically questions about the show and about us and that kind of thing. It's fine, you should do it. Now, go to our website right now and read the reviews for the games that were on today's show. You'll be very edified as a result. That was nice. Good. Yeah. Right. Good night. Bye bye. Coming up tonight.